All right. Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Authentic and Unaltered. With me, a very special appearance, first time in front of the camera for episode 15 here, is Jason from Basement Card Collector. Welcome, and thank you for showing your face to the YouTube community here. John, thank oh man, seriously, thank you for this. I'm still, still a little bit of a shock uh, to be doing this uh, to see myself on the screen. It's not as it's not something I'm used to for sure, um, but I'm super excited to be on here, and I can't believe I can't believe I'm actually on here. I'll be honest. This is a this is a pretty cool thing for me. Well, it's great to have you. Uh, if any of you aren't familiar with Jason, he uh, collects a lot of different cards. A uh, big fan of the Cubs, the Bulls, the 49ers, lots of pop culture stuff even, yeah. and is huge with doing the TTMs. So, uh, I mean, I have no desire to do TTMs ever, but I enjoy watching him do it. So, uh, that's, that's, how, that's what I get out of it. So. Uh, and, uh, you know, a little bit of vintage, but, uh, all kinds of stuff. I mean, look at all the boxes behind you. Uh, I mean, set collecting. Yeah. So it, it, it is, uh, the, the view, this view we're showing this time is something that I'm taking in kind of as well as you guys are, um, <laughs> It's a longer story. Maybe we'll come up across that down the uh, down the rest of this video. But I love, sure. and I love, yeah, just like you said, I collect tons of things, and I don't know really where to stop. Or I just kind of <laughs> like things, and we pick them up. We pick them up when we see them, and I I do have some goals, but I feel like they're so broad. Yeah, I just I, I like getting different things and I'll watch a video from somebody and then we'll kind of go down that path and say, that sounds kind of cool. Let's, let's look into that. Well, there's all kinds of people that will, that'll be watching this that like pieces of cardboard. They collect, like collecting autographs. So uh, well, let's get uh, going here. Let's, cool. let's backtrack a little bit first. Yep. Uh, young Jason, uh, what uh, sports did young Jason participate in and youth and up through high school? Young Jason, before the beard, we were into baseball and really just baseball and football came later. Started with T-ball like everybody does, I think. Uh, we had a huge neighborhood where we could get kids together just like that. We could play some football, some basketball, you name it. We could get a big group together. And the local park was not too far away. And so we were there all the time just playing catch, throwing it, hitting it. We played baseball mainly. Um, we did kind of run into a couple dry spots where we'd go hit the park and play tennis. Uh, it's things that were not so regular. Some basketball mostly, but basically, basically baseball. And then football came along in high school. All right. And uh, I mean, I know you're in Indiana now. Is it born and raised whole life? Whole life. Yes. Here in Indiana and in basketball, that's kind of the thing. Everybody here assumes or everywhere you assume basketball kids in Indiana play basketball. I just have never had that urge. I love watching it, love watching it live and TV as well, but just never had that itch to, um, to play basketball. All right. And then uh, getting into cards as a kid, what was, what was the start for you? Oh, I actually, I was thinking about this earlier as well. And uh, I have a uh, back at the, where we first were, where we first lived, we had some neighbors, we could get kids together just like that. And his name was also Jason. Uh, he was the next door neighbor and he had everything. He had the Nintendo when it was new. Um, young kids, you'll have to go look that up. He had the Sega when it was new. It's like, this is the best thing ever. Well, he also had baseball cards and I didn't have anybody really, you know, uncles or grandpas that collected cards like that. So he's like, here, and he gave me this card. And I've shown this before, but he, he gave me this Andre Dawson Sports Illustrated. And I didn't really understand what that meant, uh, who he was, or, but I loved the red, white, and blue. And 
that ki- I think he gave it to me because it wasn't one of the main, you know, it wasn't a tops. It wasn't something that was like official. And I think he was being kind and gave the little neighbor boy a baseball card and it, it blew my mind. And I thought, this is the coolest thing ever. Where do I find these things? Yeah. <laughs> Luckily for us in 1989, as I think that's about, that's where it started. Luckily for us, there wasn't a shortage of any places to find 1989 anything for that matter. Any place with a cash register? <laughs> Buy what you want. Don Russ, Tops. Uh, yeah. Tops was my favorite, but I also love scoring Don Russ. Um, we were not able to go buy Upper Deck. A dollar a pack just seemed wrong. I, I was right there with you. That's, that's too 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 rich for my blood. Yes, it was not in our in the works for us. So it was Tops and Don Russ and score as far as the eye could see, and we just went. It started from there, and we just kind of kept going and going. And since this guy, now it's kind of a funny story. If he would have given me a, you know, Steve Jilt. Maybe I'm a Steve Jolts fan for life, or maybe, you know, it's like it's happened to be because the Sports Illustrated for Kids, of course, cover many teams and many, many players. It just happened to, I'm not sure why that was the card, but he's my favorite player. The Cubs are my favorite team. A little bit, of, I think, probably a 50% split. My neighbor and then my, my best buddy and his dad collected cards. And so we went there for our babysitter. And he was a Cubs fan. I mean, things just fell into place from there. And I started, to, we kept playing baseball, of course. And then, you know, watching him on TV, you make those connections of, hey, I got that guy's card. I have that guy's card. And that's where, oh, yeah. and then it just, pi- they pile up. They start piling up in boxes everywhere and binders. And that's where we are today. And did that keep, going continuously or was there a stopping point and then a restart uh, what was your your history there with collecting we went pretty heavy until probably 98 is about the last year i remember buying packs um i graduated in 98 and so it was just kind of the money was just you know it goes somewhere else uh, i didn't really stop liking it and i still watched it when i could but just didn't really have kept them all and stored them all and would occasionally get a pack like for Christmas, I want to say, but nothing too, nothing too serious for quite a while. And then I don't really remember when I started every now and then like a yard sale I might see, or a buddy would sell, like would be selling his collection from high school. And so I, I kind of accumulated a couple collections that way which I love doing because of, I love the set building. And so to get a big, massive pile of cards to go through, which is so cool that when you don't know what's in there, you don't know what you might find. And then you just, I just start piling them and saving them. And I have the 5,000 count boxes behind me, which is still kind of strange to see back there. And then just I, uh, recently, uh, YouTube has been a major part I started watching um, a few channels that I first started watching and I wasn't really looking to buy cards, but it made me start to wonder, I wonder what's out there. Just watch guys while I was walking on the treadmill of all things. And so, I mean, at this point, uh, you're collecting so many different genres. I mean, when did you broaden out to where you just collect almost everything? <laughs> when you say it like that, it doesn't sound so cool, John. <laughs> no, but I mean, uh, you're you've got the you know the football, the baseball, the basketball, the coaches. I've seen you collect uh, Olympic athletes, uh, women's athletes, uh, all the things. Pop culture. It's, yes, all the things, John. That's what we're shooting for. Um, well, um, maybe it's like this for you as well, but in middle school, language arts, the art, her, t- her name was Mrs. Pfeiffer, and she one of the jobs she had us do was to write a letter to an athlete, to an actor, I think maybe a government official. She had a couple choices, um, and I had a buddy in my class who had taken this class the year before, and going to his house later, 
he mentioned there was about, I think it was a five by seven black and white photo of Rocket Ismail signed, fr- framed and hanging on this, my buddy's brother's bedroom wall. Like, where did you get that? Well, I had to do it for homework for Mrs. Pfeiffer and I was hooked. I'm thinking you can write a letter to an athlete and they're going to sign this and send it back. And then you can do that for whomever, you know, whoever's willing to do that. I've had that bug in my, in the back of my head since I was probably in seventh grade. And so later on, when I think probably when the pandemic hit on YouTube, there were people, uh, Johnny Serena, Michael Myers, um, math bowler. There are just some really huge TTMers out there. And it got me thinking, I was like, man, I haven't done that in a long time. I think I'm going to give it a shot again. And so I have several, like you said, all of the, <laughs> all those things you listed people in there, are a couple databases where if you want to write a letter, send a note, you know, put a stamp or two, you can get some really cool stuff back. And I actually have some, if we're Ready yeah, go, go ahead. Show some. A I have that I thought, and you mentioned about every little group I'm going to show here. So here's a really cool Joe Carter 92 score. And we're talking classic guys, John. Bob Cousy. I mean, yeah. all time great. Bob Cousy is awesome at this. Um, and this was what you were talking about the Olympics. Nancy Kerrigan. I mean, I remember watching her on TV, the U.S. Olympic hero. Um, we have hey, Tanya Harding to go along with that one. <laughs> well, we could be a cool, that would be a cool duo card, but I, there's no real <laughs> solid address for that. Uh, Annika okay. Sornstam. I mean, how about this? So not even the baseball cards, but Dick Perez, the man, the, the legend of Dick Perez. He And I found a really cool photo of his on a checklist also. And there's what you mentioned. Uh, Rebecca Lobo was like the first big female basketball player I remember watching on ESPN. And then there goes your Billy Crystal on the Mike Wazowski. One of my favorite ones, without a doubt. Um, I mean, come on, Richard Petty? Richard oh, Petty yeah. is as big as it gets. And <laughs> just a letter, and he he does a – and they, they all do a great job, and – and the last one, oops, how about this? Mr. Hank Williams. One of my favorite. Just the picture itself. That glare is not too not too good, but but it's just a really cool hobby. And actually, I have a letter. I actually have one that we haven't opened yet. Would you be cool if we pull one open and see who we have? Sure. Uh here we have a Bill Lee. The spaceman, and if you're familiar with watching other TTM, he always signs it with Earth, and he puts the year on it that he signs. And there's a few folks that have been sending to him over the years, and they have Earth 2022, 2021, and so on. I'm not sure how far it goes, but I have just one from Bill Lee. So Awesome. So anyway, this is coming from Phoenix, Arizona. And really all I do is I always trim the sides and I don't ever know what's inside it unless I can recall who I sent to in Arizona, which I'll be honest, almost never happens. <laughs> so when I'm opening it here in the basement, I really don't know who's inside either. And so we pull it out and see who's inside. Well, uh, well at any one time, how many do you typically have in process that have been sent out? I think I have about 15 or 20 that are out there in in the in the world and i have a small stack here to the on my desk that i just kind of save and just to pop them in every now and then so this is actually coming from arizona on june 5th so it's been setting here for a while let's take a peek okay and you never know if it's cool or what exactly oh how about this john hall of fame Mr. Tony oh. Larusa, come on for a one. <laughs> he's a one per. That's the I picked the '89 tops because that's my favorite year. Um, wow, super pumped to get that back. '89 tops, Tony. Awesome. LaRusa. So that's just um, it's a super easy hobby. It just takes there is some time into it, of course, but. It's just really cool when you get something like that. And that will go into my 
my manager collection, like you mentioned. And what I, 89 Tops is my favorite, just my favorite set of all time. Oh, it's a great looking set. But uh, I mean, not not knowing that much about TTM at all, is there like online forums where everybody's sharing the addresses they find? Is that how you end up with? You got it. Yep. I use okay. sports, sports. It's a place called Sports Card Forum. And you create an account, you and everybody else sending out like to Tony LaRussa. I will grab my little clipboard that I keep down on my bookshelf here next to us. And you enter what you sent, uh, what date you sent it. And, and then once you get it back, you can log it as a success, a failure, it's still pending. And then other folks who want to send out to him will see the data and have a chance to send out. And then some people have a fee. Some people only sign one. Tony Tony Larusa is a one per, and that's all no noted in 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 the database. Okay, so I'm assuming then the more prominent people would be more likely to have the fee. Then is that how it generally goes? Uh yep. Like for example, uh, Wade Boggs. Wade Boggs is a great TTMer. Uh, he charges. I want to say I haven't sent to him. Actually, that's not true. I sent to him my very first batch of basically getting back into it before I knew much about it, but I sent one card and he sent it back and it was not signed. So later on and people were met, you know, sending messages saying, Hey, he has a fee. I'm like, Oh, I didn't know that. But so he charges $10 per card or $20 for a rookie card. And so some yeah. folks have a $5 fee, some, and then it always kind of varies goose gossage. He is a one per, but some folks say you need a some some say you need that fee, and some I sent to him um, one of those first batches, no fee, eighty nine tops. So it's just there are some Hall of Famers, which I think is it's a it's a personal connection between those players. Like Tony Larusa, the guy's won World Series, and he's putting his signature on the card that I sent and sending it back. That's super cool. Oh, yeah. And uh, I mean, I'm a little surprised by some of the, the Hollywood names that are in on this. I mean, oh. Bill, Billy Crystal, Tim Allen, they're big time. I mean. Oh, huge, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, no, and it's amazing. They're actors. Uh, they have voice actors. If you... If, if there's someone and not everybody of course is in 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 on this and so you just look through the and there are several databases you just kind of look through and see who's signing who's not and then you can also send out they have pers uh, private signings but there's a channel brandon stebbins he's collecting the 1990 don russ set and getting it autographed and he's down to like 20 cards to having the whole 660 card set autographed and there's some big names in there you think about it bo jackson has a few cards nolan ryan has a few cards um i'm actually trying to get something together for a nolan ryan autograph all of his all of his things that are signed for him are through the nolan ryan foundation so i'm working on something like that but people build sets and also get them autographed yeah that that's that's crazy talk, but it's cool. But it's like, wow, you're going to get 660 autographs of one through 660. It's amazing. And uh, I mean, are you doing anything like that with a set or uh, not to this point? Or I'm on a mini small set. I would like to get the Cubs 89 top set is kind of about the only thing I'm working on as far as a set, but I think of like Diamond Kings. They all they are just super cool looking. And oh, yeah. if I find a guy that has a Diamond King, I will look for that card and then look for like rated rookies. I just think are a really cool little subset. So if they have a rated rookie, um, I can't think of who it was. Like David Need. David Need has Diamond Kings rated rookies. Just those. I'm not sure. Just those little bonus type cards with a little extra logo on. I just think they look super cool. And so now for you, is everything centered kind of around the TTM or are you just collecting any card sets just for the cards or? 
I do. I have a big um, back here behind, not behind me so much, but to my right and to my left, I have just sets box sets. Like um, my tops run is kind of my favorite set. Um, my super wife bought me the seven, 1979 top set a few Christmases back. That's the year I was born. And so yeah. that's, that was kind of like my base year. And I couldn't believe it. I mean, and there's a graded Ricky Henderson card, which I think I've shown. I think I have two graded cards. One of them is the Ricky Henderson. And one of them I got from a channel. <laughs> I mean, John, this here, that was my second graded card. And you sent that. And it, I just about had, I couldn't believe it. And I still don't believe it that you sent this card. And... It's super. Well, I love it. I love it. And I just couldn't believe it that came through the mail. And that is the first time I've ever sent a mail away care package. So, no way. Way. <laughs> way. I did not know that. I, um, but I've caught on to like the idea of like as a younger Jason, as you were saying, it's like I couldn't get enough of, I couldn't get enough. And if I had the 1990 Donruss set, which I do, I had to get the 1991 Donruss. And then suddenly I have these little runs of tops 79. And I've gone backwards. I'm working on the 78 top set. That's my closest one that I'm next, probably the next one I'm hoping to finish. And then we run up and then my kids, they will get usually get me the new top set for Christmas as well. So they're kind of helping me keep on the current year and I slowly trudge through um, picking up other cards from the sets beyond and kind of current back to as old as I can find, but it's hard to find cards from the seventies in bulk, you know? Oh yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, I guess there's uh lots sometimes you can find uh, on eBay, but uh yeah, unfortunately, that that is my only really uh, vintage card store is eBay. With uh, me living around uh, Blazer Country, so, um, but uh, uh, anything else uh, we haven't necessarily seen that you're working on that? Uh... Um, I do have. I pulled a few things I'd like to show, um, and I feel like I can. I don't want to use the word blame. Uh, what would be a good word? Motivated by blaming, if you will, vintage. Okay, vintage. When I see like your all of your 1960s back there, and then your pre-war stuff, which is just amazing. I thought I just I didn't really ever have the need to get into that or to have one or to have a certain player. And then I've the last few times I've gone to my card shop, um, it's very close. Um, actually going to be making a trip here within the next day or two, I hope, sneak off. But I've been trying to grab somebody from our vintage world just because I see all of you guys with them. Nice, 63 tops, Yogi well, Berra. I have a Yogi Berra, John. Okay, that's not something I've ever thought I would ever say. That was one of my more I'm – this was a dollar at a yard sale. Oh, yeah, Elston Howard cards are a bargain. One dollar. Okay. Yeah. One dollar. This is one of the cooler things, but I can't believe I have these. I can't believe I own some of these uh, copies of these things. That's sweet. 69, uh, second year, uh, Johnny bench. That, that's an awesome card. I can't believe that. <laughs> and this, I bought this the same day. Oh, wow. 50, uh, 58 Hank Aaron. Yeah. And I drove home from the card shop that day like this my hands on the steering wheel like <laughs> i i can't believe it. i was holding the wheel looking at these two cards i'm thinking how do i have these so i'm trying to get into the vintage feel and it like i just can't believe i have one of these oh yeah 64 frank robinson good one kind of goes along with this i mean i don't our shell yeah and it had some someone thought they'd use their black sharpie on the back and do something on the back but I don't, I don't mind. Oh, yeah. And so this was my first vintage card I bought. Sweet. 56 banks. 
Oh, I couldn't. I mean, I just, I just can't believe I have some of these things. And I see, so I don't really need to get every card of every person. I just feel like I want to have one of those, a playing days card of all of those greats. Like, like I don't really need an Al K line rookie card, but to get an Al K line somewhere in the sixties would be cool. Um, I'm not against the all-star cards. Those are some of some, just, they look so nice. Yeah. So I have a couple of the vintage cards. I'm trying to get some of those. Um, stuff like this. A Tony Hawk Sports Illustrated card. This would be his rookie card, I've heard. And I think I pulled this from a magazine back when I was, you know, one of those fifth or sixth graders. Cool. How about this? A 92 Bowman which doesn't really probably ring many bells in the collecting world. But this guy, he was my coach in college. Cool. And he, and he told us he had a baseball car. And we all, we all kind of thought he was just messing with us, but he is the coach still at the college where we went, uh, a school in Indiana. And I found it one day at a card shop and couldn't have been happier to get a 92 Bowman Greg Persky card. So I'm thinking about one day also sending it TTM just to kind of make it a full circle of, <laughs> you know, I mean, that would be a, that would be a really, really cool add to that. Absolutely. Uh, what do you think about these? This is my coolest Mickey Mantle card. It's a 91 score. Oh. It was like a, po uh, I think Stan Musial had some, maybe Yastrzemski was also in it. And obviously, that's not anything close to a playing days mantle. But that's about my, that's my rare. I dare say rare, my rarest Mickey Mantle card, a ninety-one score. Yeah, the you know playing days mantles, uh, unfortunately, uh, are uh, of the more expensive variety typically. So I need, I just, I feel like I need to get one of those. I have no idea how that will happen. Um, what else do I have? I have a little binder of, I don't know how to show this, but like of magazines, the first LeBron. Sweet. Um, this one, this one's really cool. How about that? Yeah, the first, uh, Jordan 84. First, uh, one of them, I think in the Bulls uniform, at least. Uh, yep. And yeah. then. These are all yard sale finds, John. How about this? Jeez. That's 83, him and Sam Perkins. But just things like that. I don't know what else is in here. Oh, yeah, this was fun. How about that? 1990, Ken Griffey Jr.? I don't know, maybe 89? 1990. So it's a very early Griffey. Yeah. And I find these at yard sales for like a dollar. Just kind of cool. The real, the real deal. Oh Shepard yeah. Ninety two, I think. Ninety one. So, I like to say it's only cards, but I probably haven't. I probably have an issue. John is probably what you're making me realize here. Well, yeah. I mean, I saw some of your what you were collecting too with the autographs was photos. I, I thought it was really awesome that uh, ESPN stuff you got back, like. The Vital picture. And that's actually right up. That's a really ironic case. Right, right above my head is the Dick Vital. Um, so way back at your first question, when did I start? I would go. This is probably we'll keep this a secret just between you and I. I substitute taught when I was uh, home for school in the summer. And a lot of times when you substitute, if you've ever done this or anybody who's ever done this before, when you're a substitute teacher at the high school, you either take it back then, 1990s, back then you would either take a test, you, you know, you would give the kids a test or you would show a video. And I wrote when it was video day or test day at the high school, I would be in the back an occasional head nod looking up at the kids to see if everybody's OK. And if they were, I was writing letters to Dick Vital. I wrote a letter to Bobby Bowden. Steve Young, and back in the 90s, Steve Young, and there were some really cool names that worked on, just kind of like, probably like today, those ESPN studios. 
and Steve Young sent a card back. Dick Vitale sent a really cool thing. Uh, the eight by ten you see there. Yeah. The Bobby Bowden one was the coolest. I have a Florida State mini helmet, and I wrote a note to Coach Bowden asking for a tomahawk decal. Is all I asked for, and he sent me. I did not get the decal, but he sent me like a thirteen by fifteen autograph with a great. Well, can I just grab it? It's right here. Yeah, go for it. To Jason Go, Go Knowles, Bobby Bowden, and down at the bottom it says, Thanks for the letter on 21203. Sweet. Oh, that is one of my favorite things. And all I asked for was a little decal. And I like didn't, they stick on the helmets when the, the guys it. have a good game sure. or whatever. I yeah. thought, hey, I have this helmet. Would you send me a decal? And he did not, but he went way above uh, and sent me a really cool photo. Yeah. Yeah, he couldn't uh, He couldn't give you one of those stickers because you hadn't earned it in a game. So I get it. I totally get it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah, and then you had the Chris Berman. Uh, Chris too. Berman. Oh, I couldn't believe it. And I and I remember getting that letter. I even saved the envelope for that. It's like had my name on the top coming from an ESPN watermark. Thinking, oh my word, this is my chance. I'm gonna be, get to host Sports Center like I've always dreamed of. <laughs> <laughs> no such luck. Uh, but he also signed a card I sent him, and he typed a really cool note on the stationery saying, you know, thanks for the support signed the card and I kept the envelope, the letter in the card. And it's also in a, in a picture frame too. Oh yeah. And you know, back in the day when there was only two, two times viewing a sports center and they actually had good programming in between that wasn't like talk radio. Now it's, yeah, it's all day and <laughs> yeah. the, the good old days, John. Yeah. All those documentaries they used to show what, uh, what uh, it was how we learned about all the, the past heroes. For, for sure. I love those still today. Yeah, that's what I want to watch. If I'm watching something, I'd rather watch a documentary or something like that. Absolutely. But uh, so, uh, you know, all this collecting, you know, what uh, what uh, was the impetus then to, to put it out there to the world on YouTube? Well, I'll tell you what, it was not easy. And it probably... I can't speak for everybody, but I we, we walk on the treadmill, would run on the treadmill and then would walk and then just whatever would happen. But then I started watching videos of it was mainly the autograph guys, the TTM guys and a couple of Chris Sewell. Or I assume you're familiar with him. He was the first well, card collector, investor, dealer in that order. A buddy, yes, we exactly we say that. A buddy of mine actually sold his cards to Chris, which I thought was kind of a wow. You sold all of your cards. First of all, we've got another issue, and two, <laughs> dude, you sold it to the guy that I watch on I watch on YouTube, and um, so we went back and forth, and he he got a fair price, he thought, but he still short story probably wishes he could have kept them, but. Um, but I thought, well, I'm watching these videos. I'm watching these videos. I have a ton of things. And then my idea was nobody would watch this. I don't want to put myself on TV or on the screen, much like now, John. <laughs> I, I, uh, <laughs> but I thought, man, if I can just, that can show cards because I, I just watched the Elite, James the Elite Hunters video. It's like people, I just, people around me, I have a couple buddies that used to collect and I've acquired their collections actually. Um, and they gave them, they didn't want anything to do with them. Um, they kept some of their, you know, kept some of the favorites, but the bulk stuff you see behind me, most of them came from two, two good buddies. And, uh, but I thought, man, I like to look at these things, but there's no one really that is dying to look at them when they have some free time or, uh, you do get the occasional, uh, you know, what's your most expensive card question. It's like, I don't have anything that's worth a million dollars. Okay. There's nothing you would really enjoy. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
but I like looking at them. I love yard sales, love looking. I just, when you don't know what's inside, it's just a, it's a really cool feeling and you don't know that and you go through them. And so I was basically, it hit me on the treadmill. I think, I think I'm going to record a video. And so my family, and I bet I, I'll bet I had, I haven't watched it in a while, but on my very first video, I think I might've had like 12 or 13 envelopes to open. <laughs> I think it took me like, I took me like three days. It felt like to record that first video. And you're like, I don't know what to do with my hands. I don't know where to put this. Like I, my desk that I'm sitting on is made from our old high school's like basketball floor. They refinished it. So they gave out chunks of the floor. So the wood that I'm sitting on or my card set on, have these slats or the, the slats. And so my very first video, I remember it and it makes me cringe thinking about it. I, I took saw the, you stick what? up. <laughs> I stuck it right in the middle. I didn't even think about it. I'm like. <laughs> so yeah, I, you were uh, made enough people cringe that I think uh, what, what I saw a few videos later, someone sent you uh, stands. Yes. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, he's a good friend he actually lives very close by and he gave a, a gift to the channel uh, <laughs> thank you Steve And but no I shut the video off that day I remember like it just happened I, I could have just uh, <laughs> made my skin crawl thinking I'm like I have never done anything like that in my whole life and I just recorded myself doing it to a card that's autographed what's wrong with you <laughs> but no so I thought yeah. I'm gonna, make some videos and I really just expected nobody to watch. I thought it'd be me, my wife, my kids would be, a, give me a sympathy look. <laughs> and, uh, and I remember watching it that first time I knew I saw a couple people had the views. I'm like, no way somebody watched this. Well, looking back on it, I didn't know how to set, turn the comments on. So my first video is made for, the kid filters on so you couldn't leave a oh. comment on my first video thinking <sighs> oh yeah it, it's a little confusing when you start out with that whole is this for kids or not and yeah you, and oh. you click yes thinking it's okay for kids then yeah no one can comment that's exactly what i did so i thought yeah. okay well that was that w we learned something there and exactly so my second video i made a little note said hey sorry I'm a noob and I don't know what buttons to click here. So, but, and then you just kind of watch those views and I couldn't believe it. I remember taking a screenshot when my first video had a hundred views. I'm thinking, no, I can't believe this. And I'm still amazed. I still think it's super cool when like you get a new subscriber. It's like, I show my hands on the screen, John. Okay. And now because of this, uh, my beard is on there. It's like, I've never, I just, I can't believe people watch and I'm super grateful. And I think it's, it's just amazing. And that's not even probably a strong enough word, but, but it's a super, it's a, it's a blast. Yeah. I'm right there with you. It's like, it feels so weird to think, uh, I have this many subscribers. Just imagine if they were all in a room watching me talk, how, how that was. That sounds that sounds terrible. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's it does feel a little surreal. So, um, you know, and then, you know, as it led to then your, you know, people knowing who you are in any capacity. I mean, uh, not showing your face kind of. Um. Or like, have you met up with anybody? Uh, I have not. Yeah. I've talked to folks. Um, we almost, my buddy Jeremy, uh, he has given me, we'll give him a little plug here real quick. He moved. He's the one that sold the cards to Chris. And he had tons and tons of these white boxes came from him and my other good buddy, Jack. Uh, Jeremy, he, I mean, I hate to say this out loud. We might want to keep this as a secret also. He has this, he had a piece of property. He was going to take all of the boxes out and he said it either jokingly or serious and he was just going to burn them. <laughs> what was I to do, John? Okay, I couldn't let that, as, uh, I, as I'm like, I couldn't let that happen. So I ended up getting yeah. a huge chunk of cards and they weren't all commons either. He kept out the really, he had some really nice things and he kept those things out. 
but gave me tons of cool cards as well that have gone into my player binders that have gone into set builds and just, you know, in the random places that they go. But so he g- gave, uh, I, I probably should have counted them, but my buddy Jack did the same kind of thing, gave them, kept some good ones, gave them to a, but so to a kid that was kind of learning or starting to collect and turns out um, he didn't want probably 60 or 80, maybe 80,000 cards. Maybe the parents didn't want them to be storing all those boxes. So I got a, I got a call a couple years after the fact saying, Hey, would you want to go get those cards after all? Yes. Yes, we do. And so, so, uh, so, so now you've uh, shown your face. Uh, it's a whole new world for you two for you moving forward. Right. So, I'll probably be making music videos by the time this is over and TikToks and uh, no, I don't know what to do with this still. I don't know how to, I don't know how to handle this. Well, you can't, you can't go back now, right? <sighs> is it too late? Can we yeah, restart? The cat's out of the bag. So uh, it is back true. in. That's true. But, it's uh, not so bad. It's not so bad. I mean, you're a year and a half in now and, uh, uh, 400 something subs. I mean, now that you're showing your face, though, it's just going to explode. That's that's what happens because uh, now people are going to be able to get to know you so, or feel like they do because, you know, it makes well, a difference. I think if you listen really carefully, those would be the people turning off, John, at this point because, uh, no, I, I just, I would like to go to, to the national. And oh, that's what I was saying. So my buddy Jeremy, we were going to go to last year's national in Chicago. He had tickets. Uh, Atlantic City, you mean? I'm sorry, two years ago. Two years ago in okay. Chicago. Sorry. Yeah. And he, we just couldn't go last last minute, and it was, uh, it was. I couldn't wait, to, and I didn't know anybody. This was before I knew anybody. I just thought, my word, that's a bunch of baseball cards and i don't know what it even looks like going through it but i can't wait to get there um so someday i'd like to get up there we're not too far i mean chicago's like it's like a three hour two and a half hour drive so it's definitely close definitely closer than oregon <laughs> or you know florida yeah. but we're gonna get up there sometime i just don't know don't know when but so not it, this year then huh no, it's not in the plans for this year. We have some other things going on, and but I'm gonna have to get up there sometime. That's for sure. Or do Cleveland, plan- uh, maybe. Huh? Do, you, do you plan on going to any of those, or have you been to one before? I have never been to a national. My plan is uh, next year in Cleveland. So mm, maybe we'll shoot for that. Cleveland is not. We're kind of. I mean, Indiana is in the middle, so we're really close. Close-ish to anything in the center of the country. Sure. And then, um, so, at this point, anything else uh, before we move on to your uh, personal questions? I don't think so. I've shown some things. There are some things over here I didn't show yet. or I didn't really show, but I can wait and see if they pop up in the questions or they're I think I'm okay. Think All I'm right. Okay. So, uh, you have a favorite movie. Oh, it's. I think it's. I don't know if it's always been true. I think it'd be easy to say Major League or Bull Durham, and they are. I hate to even say that they're not at top of my the top of my list, but I think I've moved on to the Facing Nolan documentary it's not really a movie i get that's not really the same as a movie but i just thought that was just so cool to see nolan ryan for one talking about uh, you know facing george brett and dave winfield and then on the other hand seeing dave winfield talk about what he felt facing nolan have you watched that have you watched this show yeah that was a very good documentary uh one of the best ones uh, that was made recently. Yeah. Just loved. I love seeing the player. Like we see him on the baseball card and you know, it's a photo obviously, 
But to see what to hear George Brett in my mind, George Brett is probably one of the toughest dudes that probably played ever. And to hear him say he was nervous or he was, you know, maybe not so excited about digging in to face in my mind I'm thinking who's tougher than Dave Winfield? You know, how is he scared of anything? So I loved yeah, that. Dude. Yeah, who is he scared of? <laughs> and they hear Pete Rose and him talk and just seeing the actual players tell like when you turn the card over and you see their stats like the reggie documentary did you watch that yeah that was another good one so good he talked about how he had a pay cut after leading the league in home runs oh yeah charlie finley uh before the reserve clause finally uh got thrown <laughs> away so that's not right so, yeah uh, but the, i think that face facing nolan has has jumped up to the top of my list and now and I've always I've always loved those documentaries. Uh loved them. But now I just I would rather click on even if I'm not interested, like I've started at Chin um which is his name Chin Ming Wong from the Yankees a couple years uh now probably several years ago. He has his own. I'm watching that too and I'm not I'm not really a diehard Yankee fan or 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 that player so much, but I just love seeing the story of of the athletes. Sure. Uh, do you have a favorite uh, subject in school? Uh, I'm going to say PE. <laughs> PE. And really, and it, it has a, a little story. Um, I remember, and I was in kindergarten, and I remember his name is Mr. Garner. Um, and we are actually shown some of his cards on here as well. Um, probably way back in the early days of the channel. He has the 59 top set the 60 56 55 and 61 sets yeah so, i watched those videos today <laughs> they're so good well they're well not the videos the sets and the card yeah. that he has so back in kindergarten i did, i only know it's kindergarten because i've done the math and he was my kindergarten teacher so it's easy to look at that year but we were sitting on and our gym floor has a rubber a rubber floor if that seems strange, it does. And if it doesn't seem strange, it was a rubber floor that was very cool to the touch. Okay. So we would sit in a circle and stretch. And Mr. Gardner came in one morning and asked us, and I remember this like it just happened. Did you guys hear about the kid? I say kid. Did you hear about the player that hit two home runs in one inning last night at the baseball game? And of course, no one knew this. We were like six years old. No one knows this no, this answer, but it's Andre Dawson. Of all the people, Andre Dawson hit two home runs the night before that gym class day. And later on, there's a couple cards that kind of highlight that. I think it's 87 Donruss highlights, or maybe it's 85 Donruss highlights. Either way, flip it over, and he hit two home runs in the same inning. I think he's done that twice in his career, but it was just kind of cool piecing the, the dates back together. Um, and then later on to get this, this card after hearing that story and Mr. Gardner, uh, he's now long since retired, but he ended up giving me a bunch of his cards also when he, when he was trying to downsize and move on. And it's so, and then also those super cool sets are still in my basement, the 61 tops, the 59 tops. He's one, I think he's wanting, well, I'm certain he's wanting me to find a buyer for him. To, to sell them for him so oh yeah those were nice looking quality too so yeah the, the Kofax rookie set the 56 that's a 55 yeah 55. but it's just cool looking at them oh yeah those are uh i love the 55 set with the nice colors they did on that um especially the yellows like the Kofax is so Ooh, yes yes but um uh, you have a favorite food? Tacos. Tacos all day, every day. Every day is Taco Tuesday. It would be okay with me. <laughs> uh, what did you want to be uh, when you grew up? I wanted to be a pitcher for the Chicago Cubs. So how close did you get? 
Well, we we pitched in Little League. We pitched at high school. We pitched through college. Um, and a couple of buddies, um, we went to a little minor league open tryout. There's a team um, maybe an hour away in Fort Wayne. And I basically could throw fast enough, but not fast enough. Uh, my changeup was slow enough, but not fast enough. <laughs> So I would say we played four years of college, and then we played some softball afterwards, which is really fun as well. But I, I we pitched for a long time, and so not quite to the not quite to that level. Okay, but I, I heard college, so I just wanted to to ask uh, what you tried for at least. So yep, we pitched for a while. Cool. Uh, who's the most famous person you've ever encountered in real life? I have a well. I've I've watched my my episodes here for your for your series, and I kind of hope I I didn't have a lot of good answers for these questions, and this was about one that I thought was my 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 best answer was. And in college, we went on our spring trip to Miami to for our baseball trip because you know it's always amazing in Miami, and it's not so nice in Northern Indiana in the spring. Sure. So uh, back then, this was my first plane ride. We we flew down to the to the airport and we stayed for the whole for the whole I think week and a half. Have never been sunburnt so bad in my life either. It's not important to the story, but we're sitting at the airport to fly back, and I've always kind of had this eye for just people watching, like probably we most we most do. So we're sitting at the airport and our our flight was delayed. And it was delayed and it was delayed and it was just pushed back almost the entire day. But I'm just sitting there looking at folks, watching people come in. And I see a person that kind of looks familiar. He's coming up the uh, kind of the ramp and I can see his head first. He's getting a little taller, a little closer. And he's got like bags, two bags here and a bag over his shoulder, probably 32 bags. I think he had three or four kids and his wife. I'm thinking, oh my word, that's Michael Irvin. That's Michael Irvin. And we were in Miami, so that made sense. I knew he was from there and went to school there and all that kind of stuff. I'm thinking, I think that's Michael Irvin. And so we're just kind of sitting on the sitting on the our chairs and just watching him think that is that is definitely Michael Irvin. So I see him stop and he sets his things down. And I walk up and say, hey, Mr. Irvin, would you mind? I had a, our backpack because we were flying back. I had my backpack and a little piece of paper. Say, hey, would you mind signing this? And he's like, well, um, I got to go down. I'm not sure where they must have been going. And I just thought, hey, that's OK. I got to say hello. And that's pretty I'm, I'm I'm happy with that. He goes, I'll get you on the way back. I'm thinking the guy is never coming back. <laughs> OK, <laughs> let's face it. He's saying nice things, but he's not coming back. So he, he goes away, they disappear, and I go back and sit. Well, wherever he went, he comes back, comes back to where I am, and signs my little piece of paper. And I couldn't believe it. He came back, and he signed. And how about this little photo? It's a photo of, that's me in my 49ers hat. That's Michael Irvin in his palm tree whatever shirt. And he signed that big, big piece of paper. Sweet. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. So I didn't expect him to come back and I, I will remain a, a Michael Irvin fan un, until the end. And that's, he is not on my team by any means, but, um, he was totally <laughs> oh, yeah, he's, he's the enemy uh, as far as, the, you know, those years. I mean, the fact that he signed it. I'm wearing a 49ers hat. I think is kind of funny. Um, yes. But I had a buddy take a picture of him when he came back. I'm like, get him a picture of this happening. Okay. He's like, yeah, sure. But so, and we've seen, but that by far is the coolest story of, I mean, he was totally cool to come back. He definitely had better things to do than come back and talk to a, an 18 year old kid that was just sitting there for 20 hours straight. So I'm, I'm super impressed with that. And that just took a lot of effort on his part that he definitely did not need to do. That's awesome. So it uh, makes me feel better about him. <laughs> yes, yes, always. I'm thinking even when he does some things on the shows and the TV that you probably wouldn't think is a 
a great choice. I just, I'm always, I'm going to be a, a fan. Awesome. Uh, do you have a favorite song? I don't really have a song. Uh, I just listened um, big into Luke Combs. So not really a song, but a Luke Combs or Morgan Wallen. But not, not really one either. either. Uh, country. They're country, country artists. Okay. They don't play country out in Oregon? Uh, I'm sure they do. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm... Uh, I think at this point, uh, it's not not my jam. So sure, I get it. I mean, listen to you know as a kid with my parents. So you know, totally familiar with Hank Williams that you got the autograph from. Ooh, yes, yes, that so, him as well. Yeah, um, you know, of course they you know they played a song for uh, Monday Night Football for years and years, but uh, also so, true. So everybody knows that one. But, yep. uh, Good song. Um, if you could have a superpower, what would you choose? I'd say t time travel. I feel, and again, I, jeez, uh, I, I, we recorded the video somewhere long ago about. Um, his name is the author is Dan Gutman and the book are the book series. My son has read them all and he read them, I think when he was like in fourth grade, maybe fifth grade. And the, that I took two of his books with us on spring break. And those are the books I was reading some fourth grade reading books, but the book, the series is this boy who travels back in time to go try and fix a, a baseball problem. Like he, he, he has this magic touch to transport back to the Bobby Thompson and the, the, the home run that changed his life back um, in the 51 world series. So he goes back because the pitcher is known for that one pitch uh, and Bobby is known for that one hit, but he actually had a pretty solid career. So he goes and tries to solve, you know, solve the problem for the pitcher which in turn, you know, therefore kind of shuts down, you know, the Bobby Thompson hero story. And then actually the person on deck after he hit that home run, you probably know who that was. Yep. Mr. Willie Mays. <laughs> a young Willie Mays. A very young Willie Mays. Oh, and yeah. Rookie year. Willie Mays. Rookie, you got it. And so he fixes it where he actually strike uh, Bob. He does not hit the home run. He, I think he walked instead. Well, there was, a, I think, a 19-year-old Willie Mays who I think grounded out and the game was over and the Giants lost. So the kid transports back into current day. He gets on the internet real quick and searches Willie Mays and his career stats are one season worth of stats. And he realizes, uh-oh, <laughs> uh -oh, we're going back. And so he then he figures out a way to, you know, but there's a babe in me, there's a Jackie in me, Hannes and me, Satchel. It's like a 10 book series, I think. So far, I've read Jackie. There's a Jackie Robinson, Jackie and me, and Willie and me. Cool. So I would say time travel would be a pretty cool, a pretty cool, pretty cool superpower if I could pick one. Oh, yeah. sure superpower or more of a Bill and Ted excellent adventure huh. power. I'm thinking, uh, are you familiar with the, the TV show Heroes? Vaguely, but yes. Yeah. Hiro Nakamura was the, the character on that one that uh, could uh, basically teleport anywhere he wanted, uh, anytime he wanted. So I need to look that up. Yeah. It, it was a pretty good show, at least the first season, before they uh, went off the rails. So No, never watched it. Okay. Um, where am I? All right. Uh, exclude your your standard household pets. What's uh, what's your favorite animal? I heard you changed the uh, parameters on this. I think for James, at least you gave well, him too many dogs. <laughs> I was getting dog, dog, dog every single time. <sighs> well, what if I say, um, it's a Hank? We have a dog named Hank, who <laughs> is our. We have a dog named Hank Aaron. 
That's Big Hank. And we have a, a little dog named Ernie after Ernie Banks. So we've had dogs. We've had a Bo Jackson. Um, so I know you're saying it's not allowed, but I think my answer is probably. We have a cat also. Her name is Ivy. Um, I, I thought you were going to end up saying that it's uh, Rebecca Lobo or something. <laughs> you know, something else sports related, but. <laughs> Basically, uh, we're just, we got, we have two dogs and a cat. Um, that's probably it. I don't, I'm not a big animal person, but I'm going to have to go dog, even though it's in, in, an invalid answer. And All right. Rule breaker. Sorry. I guess we'll just move on. <laughs> uh, so if you had the opportunity to experience a, a day of someone's life, any time in history, who who would that be for you? Lou Gehrig. Um, I remember doing a report on him, I think maybe in fourth grade. Just was very interesting. I mean, even still, obviously, a very interesting um, and very sad story altogether. And we've watched the movie and um, have a nice little Lou Gehrig collection. Nothing, of course, from the the actual days of, but uh, yeah, a very cool story. I mean, the guy couldn't have it any better, it seems, and it just obviously did not not go as planned. Just to see how he handled it. I mean, from our view, it looks like he handled it just like you would expect him to, and just I'm very interested in 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 him and his in his story. So the day you're choosing is when he's already sick, or <laughs> I mean, no, well, I think when I think of that would be like the day he gets that he does not go out to play. Yeah. And what that would look like just, you know, for so many years, he's the guy, he's the guy, he's the guy. And suddenly to see, so maybe just to be someone in the dugout watching that happen, I think would just, just be a really cool, like today it would blow up Twitter and Instagram and the internet would shut down if, <laughs> you know. Oh yeah. I thought. Uh... All of a sudden, some guy that uh, has done that kind of thing is uh, suddenly uh, seems to be sick. So, yeah, you can think. Could you imagine what would have happened if Cal Ripken would have done his his record would have happened and been snapped if the internet were what it is today? I mean, oh yeah, I mean he was already uh, you know leading up to that, you know breaking the record. Uh, you know, it was uh, almost all they talked about on ESPN uh, for the few days leading up to that. So smashed it like 500 games passed. I mean, that's yeah. a, but anyway, just I think it'd be cool to witness it. I'm not so sure I'd like to, you know, be a part of it, but just to kind of see what, you know, what did people do? What was the reaction to the to the people back then? All right. And now for my final question. Uh, so I know you are in love with your Andre Dawson autograph that's always on your desk in your videos as you know well as there are probably a few more like the Rhino and such that we can always see in your videos yes all right in this scenario exclude the, all those ones that are right there in prominent positions what is the one autograph if I told you you had to get rid of everything else that you would want to keep? One autograph? That's, you know, one TTM return that's, uh, you know, not one of those prominent ones. Those are too obvious. Mm. Okay, my first thought, which is really strange for me to say this, I, I did not have this question in mind, John, when you are asking mm -hmm. other folks their question. I did not even think of that. If I had to grab one autograph, let's, we'll keep it to the TTMs. One TTM. And all the rest of you, got to get rid of them. The first one that comes to mind, I think it's right here. That's so weird. I can't believe this is my answer. The chicken. <laughs> wow. I mean, I don't know why that's even my answer, but that's the first thing that popped to my head. Wow. That or the Hank Williams. <laughs> okay. Like those are my favorite. Those are the first two that came to my mind. That's really strange to say that out loud. 
<laughs> I love the chicken answer. He was he was huge in the eighties. I mean, uh, I mean, did you catch? Uh, were you old enough uh, for baseball bunch at all, or is that uh, a little before you? No, a little before me. I just had okay. heard of him and seen him, and you know, but never. I don't actually remember seeing him on TV or watching him on any game. Yeah, he, he appeared a little bit on that show as supposed to be the comic relief. I think I was a little too old to find him that funny anymore. Sure. Uh, so, but uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, I had his uh, 83 Donruss card that, you know, the first uh, packs I'd open. So, um, you, yeah, could send it, you could send it out, John. He'd sign it for you. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I'd have to find it, uh, but uh, I haven't uh, really fully dug through all of my old cards to the point. So, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that uh, concludes uh, my questions there. So, uh, wow. this, this was awesome, Jason. So, wow. <laughs> you made it. You're still alive. Super cool. Yeah, I'm still I'm still alive. I'm still spinning in my chair. Your face is still on camera? I mean, how does it feel? You know, people can see you now. <laughs> You'll be all right. <laughs> no, it really wasn't as bad as I uh, kind of had built up or had it, you know, leading up to. Um, yes, that was a really fun time. I I feel like I showed everything that I pulled out. And there's all kinds of things around here, but no, I and don't worry. I'm not that big. You know, it's only going to be like 200 or so people will see this. Uh, that's all. Let's keep it to that. Let's keep it to the 200 minimum. And uh, <laughs> if, you so. have, if you have to do some fancy editing and you lose my half of the screen, it's really not the end of the world. Uh, that wouldn't be authentic and unaltered if, if that happens. So, oh, well, I think well. you're going to have to stay on there. So, I like it. But uh, thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for watching. And be sure to check out Basement Card Collector if you aren't already uh, subscribed. And uh, everyone, thanks for watching. We'll see thank you next you, time.